Yeah, hold on, hold on. Ooh, that boy a critic, he just talk about it. Ooh, that boy a critic, yeah, he talk too much. Ooh, that boy a critic, he just talk about it. Ooh, that boy a critic, he just talk too much. Ooh, that boy a critic, he just talk it, he don't live it. Ooh, that boy a critic. Ooh, that boy a critic. Ooh, that boy a critic, he just talk it, he don't live it. Ooh, that boy a critic. Yeah, I know. Peace, big love, big blessings, even bigger living. This is Thinking Out Loud with Samuel Dave. This is just a conversation. Man, listen. I wish y'all understood how serious this episode is. Here we go, already with the fun flex. <laughs> Come on, you already. gotta bring that a little closer too, because I wanna hear everything. Already with the fun Today, flex. I have a extra special guest, all right? This man is a hound in the corporate space. He is a DNI professional, um, what do you wanna call it, specialist. He is, listen, if it can be done, he's somebody that's going to get it done. He is a trailblazer. Not only a, um, a, a identifier of talent, but he opens doors. He kicks in doors. And if, if the seat at the table ain't looking right, he makes a whole nother table for us to eat. Listen, today I have the founder of J. Long Achieves. Uh, uh, keep me honest, found, co-founder of, of ICTF, Urban Professionals. Founder, but we, we founder. See, look at me, Nike. Nah, we all good. Founder we all good. Urban professionals. I got the great brother Jonathan Long in the building. What's up, baby? Man, I'm just happy to be here, man. I'm excited. Like, man, this don't happen all the time, everybody. So I gotta take it. I gotta maximize this moment. I don't know when I'm gonna be back. I like that. I like that. And you are a master of maximizing moments. Man, we try to make we try to make it happen. That's it. That's all we can do, right? Listen, how was your spirit, bro? Man, I'm good, man. I'm just excited, man. I walked in the house, the energy's going. <laughs> yes. Man, I, you know, I've, I've been looking forward to this all week. So, man, I'm, I'm excited. Oh, man, all week. Listen, listen, you, I feel special because you, you don't even live in what you're talking about. Man, well, you know what? I, I, I like to say that I'm a resident of both. I'm, I'm dual residency, uh, dual Tulsa residency. and Wichita. So, you know, man, Wichita got a special place in my heart, always will. So, man, I'm, you know, I'm in the, t I'm in the town quite frequently. We appreciate you when you're in the town too. Hey man, I try, I try, to, I try to show up. How to y'all say a big shit popping? <laughs> CJ Long, that's a fact, man. Um, let's jump right into it. So we've been it. talking about you, you in Tulsa. Facts. So you, you making that move back and forth from Tulsa because family's here. What are you doing in Tulsa? Man, so uh, I saw last year. Last May, I took a position as the Vice President of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Tulsa Regional Chamber. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I, I did work at the Wichita Regional Chamber prior to that. Uh, so I lead all of our diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts uh, for that chamber there. And it's a little bit different because... So in Wichita, you know, we've got the partnership that kind of runs economic development stuff. Then we've got Visit Wichita that runs like the tourism stuff. Mm -hmm. In Tulsa, all of that is run through the chamber. Okay. So my hands touch diversity, equity, and inclusion in all of those spaces Word. in Tulsa. So, I mean, from like visitors' guides, talking, talking about events that we want to go get, yeah. different economic development policies and things of that nature, we, we, we work with all of that. So I get it. So I'm blessed to be able to kind of have my hand in a lot more of the, uh, the things that are happening within the city. That's fire. And, and the beautiful thing about that, like, and it just, again, you, you, every moment you maximize. You're not even, you're not from Wichita or Tulsa. You're from Tennessee. Yeah, Chattanooga. Chattanooga. Shout out to Chattanooga. Man, one For of my sure. favorite rappers is from Tennessee. Uh, and, and Juicy J is one of them, but my dog Isaiah was shot. That's dope. It's ill. Tennessee. Yeah, um, from Chattanooga. Chattanooga. From yeah, Chattanooga. from Chattanooga. From the chat. That's yeah. fire. That's fire. What is, what is it, what is it like growing up in Chattanooga? then coming to Wichita, Kansas, then going to Tulsa and navigating these different spaces. Man, it's crazy because one of the things that I recognized early, so I've been in Wichita since about 2008. Wow. One of the things I recognize is, you know, when I was growing up in Chattanooga, we were like 90 miles away from Atlanta. Okay. Like, so, oh. in, so in high school, you know, we, a hey, Saturday mornings, everybody do what they do. We go dip down and bust it back before curfew, right? <laughs> you know, so so we got a chance to see like 
really nice stuff that black people had that had regular lives. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't like you had to, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You didn't have to, it wasn't that you slung rock or had a wicked jump shot to right. have really nice stuff and be black there. Yeah. Like, so we got a chance to see that. It was like, why not us? Like, why? Okay, mm -hmm. cool. So, you know, now I'm in a space. So I moved from there, go to school in Middle Tennessee in the Nashville area, and then move here. And I'm like, you know, and I, I always kept that in my mentality. Like, mm -hmm. hey, I can go do whatever I want. You know what okay. I'm saying? I could go do whatever. So there's just navigating the spaces to make it happen. Yeah. So even now, you know, in Tulsa, it's that same type of spirit mm -hmm. and that same type of energy. Uh, man, Tulsa's got a super vibrant, dope, like, black professional class. Like, it's crazy. You would yeah. never imagine it. Never imagine it. No stuff. But, man, it, it, it's crazy, the stuff that they got. Is there. it like the remnants of... Um like Wall Street, like some of that same energy. I know we had a tragedy, but is there some of that same energy with folks having a it, lineage to it? And, and that's that? what that's what it is. And I mean, you know, I'll say this because I because you know you know I love Wichita. Like I 100%. loved Wichita, man. I tried to give everything I had to Wichita, yeah. right? So when I got, when this opportunity came up, man, I it was almost like I was looking for a reason to say no. Like it was almost like right. I was like. You know, like, man, like I, you know, I told everybody in my house, I said, hey, if it's a no, all you got to say is no, and it's dead. And then, man, ultimately, like, I prayed about it, and it was just like, hey, this thing, the massacre happened, right? Mm -hmm. You know, your whole career has led you towards mm -hmm. trying to make these types of things better. Like, oh, how do you, you know, so it's like, hey, here's this moment that happened, and it was the centennial can't sleep on that. It was the centennial right. of the massacre when I when I when I when I got the opportunity. All signs point. Yeah. Know. So it was like, hey, here's this horrible event that happened to your people. Yeah. You know, and you got a chance to go down there and join a a vibrant group of people who are trying to do right in the midst of that. Are you gonna run away from it or are you gonna run towards it? Word. And ultimately I had to go down there and you know and that's where we at. And you you took that run and Man. you killed it. Crazy. And for folks that don't know, when you say regional chamber, that's chamber of commerce. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. What, what what does the chamber of commerce do in a city or town? Like, Man, so so what the chamber does is the chamber is responsible essentially for the vibrancy of a city. So right. it, so in different ways. So like in Tulsa, when I say we're over visitors, we're over economic development. The chamber is a business member organization, but we try to make sure that the economy is a good place where businesses can thrive and where they want to, you know, where other businesses want to be. Mm -hmm. From a tourism perspective, people want to live there, people want to visit there. Yeah. And then it really is responsible for looking at the holistic place and saying, how can we make this the best place that it can be uh, for whatever the infrastructure allows? So it's, it's just a really, you know, if you're in business, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're in business, tap in. Yeah. Uh, now, it is a membership organization, so okay. there are some fees for membership and all of that. But I, what I tell people, what I tell business owners often is, yeah. don't let that scare you. I'm not saying run and jump in first day, you know, sign, you know, go get a membership. Mm -hmm. Just stay plugged in, stay engaged, see yeah. what your connection points are, because you never know what opportunities might be there for you that you don't have to be a member of, that you can still mm -hmm. participate in and at least be knowledgeable of. Word. Just just because it's happening don't mean you gotta you know jump in it a hundred percent. But you need to know. Not knowing is not. There's no excuse for not knowing. Actually. You know, and a lot of times, we go, oh, you know, we see you know we see it all the time on Facebook. Oh, well, I didn't even see that this. I didn't. That's not their fault. That's your fault. That's your fault. Especially if it was something that you wanted to go to. Come on. You supposed to be out here looking for the information. You are gonna find everything else. Find what you need. Man, hundred percent. Man, that's fire. So if if I'm hearing it right. The the chamber is like where the, where the city hall may be the ones who develop policy and enforce policy. The chamber is the one that's got the city lit from man, a business perspective. Man, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And you know we work with you know we work in a lot of cases we work with the city on policy, policy. Yeah. like looking at pro business policy and trying to make yeah. sure that you know the stuff we're doing, you know we walk in the walk that we say we want our city to be. Yeah, that's fire, man. You, you got my mind going a million miles per hour. Right Let's now, get it. Because it's like, I, it, that's such a responsibility. That's such a privilege. I talked to, to, to Brandon Johnson. I asked him in, in regards to being in City Hall if it feels like a responsibility or a privilege, right? 
do you feel like you have a responsibility to serve your people or is it a privilege to serve your people? Oh man, it's both. It's definitely both. Like, uh, you know, whenever I'm in front of a group, mm-hmm. you know, I thank them for the privilege. Why? Not, you know, one, because I know the people who look like me don't get a chance to have those, to be in those spaces a lot of times. So it's my privilege to be able to, you know, be there and for whatever reason I'm there, right? Mm-hmm. But it's also then my responsibility to take whatever knowledge I get or whatever influence I have and make sure I can do the best that I can for my people within that. I like that. Uh, you know, so it's just really a balance of both of those mm-hmm. to be able to, you know, maximize all of the opportunities that are present and then understanding all right, who can benefit from here, this, who needs to know about that. Yeah. You know, and putting the right people in place. That's fire. So you 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 find yourself even I guess because a lot of times I'd be like yo. So I I coach and develop in my role, my professional role, and it blends into real life. And I think okay. that's why I'm able to be so good at my professional mm-hmm. roles because it's just a natural thing. Are you naturally a connector, a networker, somebody that's kicking down doors, or is that like that just came with the territory of the work? Oh man, it, you know my thing has always been. I want to make sure that everybody wins, right? Like, I, I want as many people who can win to win. Yes. Uh, but I do also understand that there are costs to that, right? There's yes. there's costs to that <laughs> in that while everybody wants to win, everybody ain't willing to do the work that it takes to consistently win. And what, and what I mean by that is it's one thing to go out there and get one win, right? Word. I want people who want to be serial champions. Like, I want dynasties. 100%. Like so, like if you're not around me and you want to be a dynasty, then mm-hmm. I don't really have a whole lot for you because it's real yeah. easy to win one. It's you know it's a reason why in most sports championships you got to win at least four games because anybody yeah. can win one. I mean, Fact. you know anybody can win one in most opportunities, right? But when you're consistently trying to win, when you're consistently giving that effort, man. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is from a little brother song. Uh, my man said, you know, do you really want to win or just look good losing? That's a bar. I didn't say it, but that's a bar. That's a bar. And, you know, and I look at that and, and I ask people that. I ask people that all the time yeah. because it's one thing to go out there and not get blown out. Mm-hmm. It's another thing to spend that extra time, you know, perfecting your craft and doing what you got to do to actually win. Okay. And a lot of times, it's a lot of us, man, that they we really just we don't want to win. We OK looking good losing. Yeah. So, you know, our effort says look good losing, but we say with our mouths that we want to win. Come on, man. Action speak. A lot of the words. Shape. Let's get it for sure. Man, what, what do you what do you think is one of your biggest challenges in that in that space? Not just the DEI space, but the space of like trying to get folks to to want to stay at a consistent level of winning. And and how two parter, and how do you how quickly do you remove yourself from situations where you recognize, no, they ain't really in it for, for the long run. Well, I'm going to answer the first, I'm going to answer the second one first. I don't find myself in those spaces a lot because I will tell you, it takes a lot to get me <laughs> to get you, like, to work with you in that space. Like, yeah. like um, you know, people will tell you, certain people will tell you, like, oh, man, I reached out to Jay Long. They, you know, he wasn't trying to do nothing, whatever. Because right. oftentimes, because oftentimes, <laughs> What I'll do is I'll get like when we first talk, I'll give you some homework, I call it. I'll give you something. I'll be like, hey, yeah, you should check out this or you should do that. And it's something by to my estimates, it's a small thing, right? Mm-hmm. And to them, it might not even be sequential. Like they be like, I don't why should, I shouldn't have to do that. Why should I do it? Word. But I'm doing that because I know that the next two or three steps are gonna require you to do something in that vein. Mm-hmm. So if you can't do this at this moment right now. Yeah. Then how can I trust that something is going to move on? And by no means do you know do you need to be connected to me to be successful? Right. But like but like uh, but like Batman said, man, hey, I ain't gonna kill you, but I ain't got to save you. So <laughs> so it's just like all right. <laughs> so it's like all right, go do it. You go do it yeah. your way. You know what I'm saying? I just know the way I know. So yeah. there's that. And then the first part of the question is, man, I think the most frustrating part is when individuals haven't figured out how they align to Mm -hmm. an opportunity or a resource they just know it's a resource to say hey i should get it yeah yeah (laughs) like you don't say yes to everything yeah like it's just like like, it's like hey hey i mean i I need i need a feature 
I, I got this record. I need I need such such a feature on it, but it might not even be the right beat. It might not be the my style. Like that person might not be the thing, but they just like no, nah, I need that because I can get that yeah. clout. And it's just like, come on, man, like make it make sense. Make it and if sense. you can't communicate how it makes sense, then it don't make sense. Why? Man, you got me in here hype, Jalon. Like, I'm looking at my questions. I don't even want to ask none of them because I can just listen to you talk about this all that <laughs> in real life, man. But looking at your, looking at your, um, your, your sustained wins, as long as I've, I've known you, I want to say like six years now, maybe yeah, seven so years. Yeah. Right. And all I've seen you do is win. Word to the Callous song. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? You, you're the first person I've seen with their name on the, on the, uh, <laughs> the Jumbotron at the, you know what I'm saying? Oh, at the Image Bank Arena, you know what I mean? Things like that. But, what what informs you to to even want to pour into others? Did you have mentors when you was moving and shaking? When you first oh, man, for sure, currently? for sure, man. Uh, man, shout out Don Sherman first and foremost, man. Mm -hmm. Don, uh, and I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell this story because it's a lesson in it. So, okay. so Don's been my mentor for a minute. So there was a position up at Evergy, uh -huh. and I was like, man, that's that's it. That's for me. It's under right. It's up right up under Don. I'm gonna be like, I'm good. Yeah, man. Do it. It's like a three-part interview. The, the last part of the interview, man, I had my dope, still the best interview I ever had. Best yeah. interview I ever had. Killed it. Didn't get it. Mm. Didn't get it. You know. <laughs> and you went in knowing this is yours. Bro, I, like, confidence on 150. Didn't get, didn't, didn't you, get you it. Didn't get it. No, I didn't. I, I didn't. Okay. I didn't in that one. No, we was all we was all soon tied up, professional all the way on that one. Word. But I didn't get it right. But we talked about it, mm -hmm. and he stayed my mentor after that. Like I, I could have easily got mad and said, "Man, mm -hmm. you know what? Burn that bridge. Forget him. Whatever." Yeah. Man, but he has then been able to help me with so much after that that I wouldn't have has been able to give me tutelage that I would not have gotten. Yeah. If I had worked up under him, real life. So real you know, life. so there's a lesson to that, man. Don't just be just because something don't work out for you, don't go and burn all the bridges because you felt like, oh, that should have been for me. That should have been yeah. that, right? And when he told me what I needed to do, I said, man, it, that won't happen again. Mm -hmm. So we, so you know, I, I was able to kind of learn from that, right? 100%. So man, I, but I've always had mentors, man. Uh, like I said, Don, man, Brian Black, man, even still today, Reggie Thompson, man. I, you know, it's it's so many. It's too many, really. I, sh I shouldn't even be name dropping like that, but man, too yeah. many. But mentorship is important, man. And you know, I think it's our role now to mentor yeah. those you know behind us because it's so much really good energy. You know, I'm still a phrase for you, man. This Wichita Renaissance, man. It's so much good energy. Yes. Uh, man, you had Fl you had Flim Diddy Flim last. Diddy. You had, you had yes. Flim Diddy. I mean, man, my boy Jr. Man, it's so much. Great energy. The whole uh, um, it escapes me right now. Not just the bringing it black crew, but then you got uh, last week big thing. Not last um, week. The 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 ICT blackout. Yes, ICT blackout group. Man, it's so much, and people just need to tap in. Like tap in. Like it's going. Like it's your responsibility. If it's something that's happening, mm -hmm. you want to see it, either go do it or tap in with those who's doing it. Real life. Real life. Let me ask this, man, because I've been in I've been in rooms with you, my man's in real life. So we've had different conversations, sat down different, broke bread in different ways. And the circle you keep, like it's like a true iron sharpens iron. Oh, and I'll, sure. I'll be around and I'm like, I don't know who the smartest one in this room is. Because it's that genuine, like everybody pouring into each other. And it's funny you mentioned Brian and Don because for the longest, those are the only two business cards I had in my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> like I had an opportunity to meet them at a um we just our business journal event. And after that, I was like, oh, yeah, these two brothers are moving this whole thing. Um, you mentioned bringing it black as well as the ICT blackouts. Um, and your queen, your wife, Christina Long, right? Something that I notice in this town, and it might just be me being biased because my wife is involved in some way, shape, or form as well. But it seems like black women have, like, a chokehold in the business space. What do you think lends to that? Like, how did, like... If you see the same thing, but what do you think causes that or like pushes that type of energy? Man, that's a great question. Um, I, I do think that depending on where the space is, mm -hmm. entrepreneurship right now is super big. Uh, black women are the, are the 
it's a trend that black women are creating the most businesses in the country nationally. Word. So nationally. So obviously you're seeing that space here in Wichita. Mm-hmm. I think also they have a passion to go out and make these changes from a community mindset, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that that has just shown itself mm-hmm. to be so powerful right now because you're hearing the stories, you're seeing the opportunities, and, you know, they're going, they're going out and just doing, making the best out of all of those things. Yeah. And, you know, Wichita's got a lot, Wichita's got a lot of energy right now around that. And it's being led by those, you know, by those groups and by those individuals. I think it's fire, man. And you mentioned community. Like that, I think that's a big thing community and it's growing up I remember growing up I would see community heavily right the mess set was popping Mac Adams was going crazy then as I got older it like was a disconnect high school to my 20s but now that I'm you know past 20s and the 30s I'm like yo it's it feels like it's another it's a renaissance the Wichita renaissance um and I just again I salute you for being a big part of that because you bro you you one of them guys and what I love about you is that I've never seen you shift who you are. 100%. How often do you find yourself in spaces where you're the only one in the room? I mean, all the time. Why? All the time. You know, and I think, and we talk about that where initially that can be a bad thing. Like, obviously, Mm -hmm. you know, we want spaces that are inclusive of everyone. uh, But speaking specifically as, you know, as a black person. Yeah. You know, a lot of these rooms we have not been allowed to be in, mm-hmm. right? And as they started to not open the door, you know, creak the door open a little bit, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's one of us in there, you know, maybe you get two of us in there, right? Mm-hmm. I've always looked at it as it's my responsibility, going back to what we were talking about earlier, yeah. to make sure that whenever I leave, it's now two or three chairs, you know, yeah. than just the one that I occupied. So, you know, it's one of those things to make sure that we're changing those landscapes. But in doing so, being super, super authentic to who we are, uh, you know, this people, people laugh a lot because I'll go to work like this, like right. literally <laughs> like this. Like if I don't have meetings or whatever, I will go to work chaining up like this. Yeah. And, and it's fine. That's who I am. You know, but when I need to throw the suit, I'm suited up. Like you, you go get I'm zero to hundred. You go get me in whatever way, but I'm gonna be me, and I'm comfortable in that. Yeah. And I think sometimes we've heard so much that oh man, you got a cold switch, you got to do this. Mm-hmm. I don't like the term cold switching. I understand why people use it. I prefer effective communication, and I say that okay. because I say that because I don't talk to my friends how I talk to my mom. Real life. You know, Real and it's life. not that I'm being a different person. Yeah. It's just, hey, what I'm saying, I want you to understand it how I'm meaning it. So, thing. you know, so it's, it's not necessarily that I'm being like a totally different person. Right. Like, I'm not being fake. I'm just communicating in a way that I know you communicate so that you'll get it so yeah. that we can then move forward with whatever it is that I want to move forward in. Man, that's so real. Man, I... I... I used to be, I used to, I won't say shrink, but I used to like try my hardest to adapt wow. to, to the room. And this was, this was probably like, this was many years ago mm-hmm. when I first started yeah, making sure. moves in the corporate space. Then I was a diversity manager and I was like, oh, I'm preaching to the choir. You feel me? And it gave me the gall and the audacity at work to be like, yo, you're going to, you're going to get what you get. You're going to see me how you see me. Um, I don't say awesome. I say dope. Right, so 100%. Like, word, stuff like that. Um, but like you said, communicating effectively. I've been told before, like, I shouldn't cuss in my music. And I'm like, yo, at the same time, there's some folks who can effectively get that punch when it's delivered that way. I'm not going, if, if we have an intellectual conversation, I'm not going to communicate like that, right? So I love I love that analogy that you just used because that's not one I, I hear often from folks. So, you know, and yeah, and it's, it's a different, you know, and everybody is different. Right? So those yeah. who those who believe in code switching and use that term, I'm not saying they're wrong. I just yeah. think about it differently. 100%. I mean, it's one of those things. And then, hey, man, I got to bring up one other point that I totally that yeah. I totally whipped on earlier uh, with the whole mentor conversation. Get mentors that don't look like you as well. Mm. Like if all you're doing mm. is looking for people who look like you, yeah. then you will miss out on opportunities. Man, Ed O'Malley from the uh, well, formerly of the Kansas Leadership Center, yeah. now over uh, who's leading the Health Foundation. 
man, one of my first allies. One of my first allies. Uh, You mentioned Urban Professionals uh, before. He was one of the first people that believed in what we were doing. Let us use the building for free anytime we needed it. Was able to do all kind of dope stuff over there because he believed in the mission. 100%. Right? So, So make sure that you're getting mentors that believe in you, not just people who look like you to do that. That's real, because it's, it's easy to, to find the, the big homie in the, in the corporate space, but no, that, come on, man. I think they say the same thing for like psychologists, like find somebody that, that has a different experience than you, so you get that different perspective and insight. And it expands the network. Oh, well. for sure, 100%. I love it, I love it. Listen, we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna go to these sponsors, Cause I would talk for forever to Jay Long. Man. I would listen to Jay Long talk for forever. I called you Yoda on, <laughs> on, on, on another show. But we'll be right back. We're going to have this quick word from our sponsors. Peace and big love. Whether you are buying or selling a home, sometimes the most important decision that you're going to make is finding the right agent and choosing the right agent to represent you throughout the entire process. Well, Carrie Dunn is that guy. Carrie's with Next Home Excel and is a licensed real estate agent and has been in the game for the past 15 years. Carrie is one of the top producing agents in Wichita and the surrounding areas as well. Listen, buying a home is a big investment and it's important to have a full-time experienced agent working with you, having your best interest at heart. You can definitely count on Carrie to be responsive to all of your needs, to be knowledgeable about the entire transaction from contract negotiations to home inspections to appraisals to close. Visit CarrieSolder.com if you're looking to buy you a new home right now if you're selling a home it's equally important to align yourself with an experienced agent who will walk you through the critical stages of pricing your home correctly as well as preparing that property for (laughs) the market at next home excel they have the best tools in the industry to help you showcase your home to get the most exposure including professional photography 3d walkthrough plus more again visit carriesolded.com to get your process started big love appreciate y'all patience as we talk to those sponsors Listen, you know what? Uh, this is not a sponsor of mine, but I realized I didn't pour you up a shot of this Don Ramon. Okay. It's kind of fire. Have you had it before? I have not. Man, listen. And I, I'm going to tell the same story every time. Me and wifey got it on our anniversary. Uh, it's got a cute little thing that opened the, box, you, you, the bottle up. You know, you got to do the little flip thing. Okay. But it's so smooth. I'm not a tequila drinker. Okay. I am a, um, I'm a vodka guy myself. Or do say. But this right here, I ain't going to chew too much. Let me just hit you a little shot. So you could, you know. Okay. No, I mean, I, I'm all about it, man. Uh, I'm you want more, you want more no, right now? no, 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 we're good, man. No, no, we're good. We're going to test it out. You know what I'm saying? We're going to test it out because I don't not overly do tequila, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something, though. Talk to if me. you get a chance. Lobos. I've been in, I've been in, I've been in mm. the uh, Mezcals. Yeah. Because it's, it's tequila light. It's, it's agave, but uh-huh. it gives you kind of a smoky flavor, like, like a whiskey. Yeah. Man, Braun has one. Lobos. Check oh, it I'm out. Like I knew I heard Lobos yeah. from somewhere. Yeah, Say yeah. Less. Check Say it less. out, bro. Yes. Check out the Lobos. We gonna sip this Don Ramon. Either one of them sip it. Hey, cheers. My Ooh. favorite. My favorite one is never above you, never Ooh. beneath you, always at your side. Uh, I've seen you gotta do this too. I ain't never know you gotta do that on the shot, but ah, uh, smooth. Smooth operator. All right. So we've been talking mentorship. We've been talking corporate space. We're gonna shift a little bit. Okay. So for somebody like me, I be busy. I don't always be productive, but I be busy as shit, right? (laughs) I'm always doing something. I look at certain folks and I be like, yo, there's no way they have time to do anything but the thing they're doing because it's so effective. What does your daily routine look like? What's your downtime? What's your daily routine look like? And what do you do in your downtime? I'm on 2K sometimes, like, right? What do you do when you just shoot? Man, so... So, you know, one, I'm a big sports person. So, man, if it's sports on TV, yes. I'm watching it. I'm getting caught up. Uh, I think th- I think the key to productivity is alignment. Okay. And I think a lot of times, you know, especially as black people, and it's like when you get in the professional space. Mm-hmm. And let me be clear. When I say professional, I don't mean corporate specifically. Word. I mean professional as in you're doing something in a profession that is a career that aligns with what you're trying to do with your life. So I don't want people to be like, oh, well, you're not, they're not talking to me because they keep saying professional. No, if you, whatever that is that aligns with what you're trying to do, you are professional in that, right? Yeah. So I think when everything is aligned, then it allows you to be able to do so much more and, and make so much more 
progress because everything is aligned. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, there's a book. It's called The One Thing, and there's a beautiful analogy, and there's a it's a picture where it's like it looks like a sun, and there are like eight little rays coming out of it, right? Okay. But then they take those eight and put them together, and it's just one line. And it's saying, if you took all of these other seven things yeah. and make them all the one thing that align with the one thing that you're doing, you'll be so much further. You'll get make so much more progress, right? Okay. So I think for me, the thing that's really been able to, to make me most effective is trying to make sure that everything I do is in alignment with whatever it is that I'm trying to get done at that moment. Life. And I'm a big believer in, hey, I'm going I'm to stay in my lane as much as possible. You know, yeah. I'm gonna stay in my lane. I'll tell you when, uh, you know, when the the murder of George Floyd happened, mm -hmm. and all, you know, we had all these companies uh, reaching out. Hey, we need black person for this. We need that. Yeah. I'd be like, well, you know, that's not my thing. Uh, that's not my thing. But you know what? I know somebody. In case in point, and I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna say it. And I'm gonna ask for forgiveness <laughs> later. But like, I had somebody from the mental health society reach out to me, and mm -hmm. was like, hey. I'm looking for, I, I need, we need, we're looking for some people. And, you know, they were genuine. Yeah. They were genuine in their reach out. I, the person who was asking me had been talking about what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And he was like, hey, man, would you, would you be interested in this? And I was like, well, you know what? That's, I'm not going to be most productive in that space, but I know some people. Yeah. But I know some people. Yeah. And, you know, some people were able to do that and have been able to make such tremendous efforts in that by, you know, again, just, not feeling like I got to do everything, but making sure everybody right. around me are working in their elements and in their alignment yeah. to be able to make progress. You know what? You mentioned that story, and I appreciate that to the max because I've been on the board of the Mental Health Association since you had that conversation. So that alley -oop, that's again, you, you open the doors, and your no may wait for another yes. And that's the, and, and again, it's not just a no, it's a hey, it's not me. Word. But Word. I'm not just going to let you then go to some, no, nah, hey, listen. Here, here's a list of people that I trust for that because I don't want you to like, because it's real easy and I've seen this happen and been in, in rooms where they'll say, oh, well, we asked such and such. They said no, so we're going to go back to what we know. Mm. So then I'm going to be like, well, no, nah, don't go back to what you know. Yeah. Here are some other options. And if those don't work, come back to me. Real life. Yeah, for sure. I like that, man. I like that energy a lot. You know, you didn't tell me. You didn't tell me what you're doing. You're down, so. Oh, you're man. Oh, you're man. Chill. Well, yeah, man, you got it, man. Listen, you you know, mental health is important. We just talked about that. So you got to be able to take breaks, man. You know, so I'm, I'm checking in with my kids, man. I think it's one, even though, you know, I'm in Tulsa half the time in Wichita a little bit, you know, the other half of the time, I still, it's still my responsibility to know what happens in my house. So like, I'm, you know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? So I like, I'm always checking in with my kids, making sure wifey has all the time and things that she needs, yeah. uh, you know, because make, that's super important to me, super, super important to me. Wow. Uh, so making sure that we're doing that, like I said, watching sports, um, you know, I, I, I get on the 2k every now and then, you know what I'm saying? I'm not good enough on the Madden, you know, like, listen, I don't What's like you playing on Xbox, PlayStation, PlayStation, okay, you know, like PlayStation. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I don't, I don't really have a whole lot of time, like for like the call of duty games or you got to sit there and like, I'll get consumed. Yeah. So I try to stay, you know. So you're not playing my career. Yeah, right? though, yeah, like, you know, if I do, listen, man, I might still be, like, in a preseason, like, you know what I'm saying? But I, I try to get in, you know, if I play, get in a quick game or whatever. And then, you know, just, just check it in with my people. It's important, man. You know, stay connected. Uh, you had mentioned, like, having that circle and be like, you don't know who's the smartest in the room, right? Yeah. It's, that's by design. Because I think everybody in your circle should be the smartest or best at something. Word. You know, and and I'll tell you, as we have talked about, you know, being successful, it doesn't come without criticism, right, wrong, or indifferent. I oh, mean, I know. you know, listen, I, I there have been plenty <laughs> of times people be like, oh, you do this, but that's only for your for your circle, and I'm not in I'm yeah. not in the clique or whatever. And my thing has been like, okay, if that's how you feel, if that's how you feel, okay, like I'm not gonna feel bad about that because my circle is dope. And right. so if they out here winning, then no, nah, I'm not going to, okay, then, then pull up. You know, my circle isn't exclusive. If, right. But if you don't want to pull up and you think I'm just going to go and find you because you feel like I should find, find you, good luck with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't have time. I don't have time to chase adults. That's the real thing. That's the real thing. It, that's, man, 
Jeez, that's such a real thing. Man, you mentioned um, you mentioned not chasing adults, right? And you mentioned the criticism. Combined with the things that you do for communities, how often do people be like, ooh, my bad, I was wrong. When I'm never. When I, they, 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 nobody's ever bro, told me. Bro, never. Like, I'm sorry, bro, I'm never. Never. I see what you're doing. Never. Never, bro. But <laughs> never. You, now, they'll pull up the next time. Okay. Well, <laughs> you, well, know, you know what I'm saying? Well, They'll pull well, up the next time. Yeah. But, you know, you know, I'm a big quote person. And one of the things that somebody hit me with one time is, you know, don't, don't chase validity from those who aren't valid. So a lot of times we're out here, you know, and you're, you're dope at this. You're dope at making sure people get their flowers, right? Word. I and, that. Uh, and I think that while it's important to get your flowers, mm-hmm. I really only want I really only want the flowers from those who I who I view as florists. So like Word. so you Word. know so I'm so I'm not out here trying to chase everybody to get all the flowers, right? Yeah. Give me the the ones that are valid for me are the ones I really care about. 100%. Like those are the ones that I really hold value in, right? So it's funny you say that because I'll be like, you know, people over as a musician, people overhype shit to me sometimes. I'll be feeling <laughs> like, yo, I don't know if you really rocking with it because if you rock with it, my streams will be crazy or whatever. But the the kudos or the praise or whatever, it be I receive it, but it be when you're out the other. The only person I be wanting to like prove something to be wifey. <laughs> I listen. I hundred percent. I understand. <laughs> and I will go through leaps and bounds. I'm like, nigga, you didn't see me. She's like, bro, just take the trash out. Like, <laughs> I'm like, damn. Like, I thought I was getting my thing off, but it's humbling and it keeps me honest, right? Um, you and a power couple. You, you and Christina are like, um, y'all one of my favorite people to watch and soak up game from. Do y'all ever find yourself in competition of who in friendly competition of who can level up the most people? So no, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you why. I'm competitive. Yeah. I'm competitive. I'm competitive. I meant that so much I had to say it three times. She is not. Mm. She is not at all. Okay. So she's a worker. And I think it works so much for us because we are, we have two very different personalities. Like she's a worker. She work. She's the hardest working person I've ever met in life. Easily. No, nobody's even close. Yeah. So her grind, it takes up so much of her time in that way that, you know, she really doesn't have, like, she's not like, oh, I saw what you're you're doing there. Oh my gosh. You know what I'm saying? Because she's she's in grind mode, right? I'm not built in that way. I'm going to lose that. I'm going to lose that every time. Like, who's working the hardest? Yeah. I'm going to lose that every time. But but what I will say is I think I'm a bigger like visionary. Like I'm like okay. Like if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna make it. Yeah, I'm gonna go big. I'm yeah. I'm arena. Like that's that's just how I'm built, right? It's hard to be humble when you start. Yeah, I'm jumbo strong for yeah. sure. Like I, like that's how I'm built. Yeah. So she doesn't compete with me because it's in her nature to work hard. Mm-hmm. But I'm always looking at her like oh my oh man wifey killing it. I, yeah. I said, what we finna do? Like, Jay, what you finna do? <laughs> like, yeah. so there's no competition at all on her part. And I'm always looking like, oh, man, like, oh, man, I got I to gotta get it. I got to get it together. Let me yeah. do Let me do this. Uh, you know, so we just, you know, just try to do what we can. We balance each other out. And I will say, and you, you know this, man. It is not easy being in this type of a situation when you and wifey, are are both leveling at the same time. Yeah. Right? And I think that all right, you know what? Let me ask you. I'm gonna turn the tables. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna turn the tables. How do you all manage Mm -hmm. those moments where it's like, hey, you a boss, I'm a boss. Yeah. But we got a situation where we might not see eye to eye (laughs) from the boss perspective. Ooh. It's a balance, right? Because we we I mean I say all the time we both work off. So we okay. think that what we're doing is always right, mm-hmm. right? And it's hard to let anybody else see, and even ourselves sometimes, right? Yeah. Like I, I hold, 
when it comes to music, when it comes to this, when it comes to white people, two B's, B.I.B. stuff, like we hold our things so dearly, right? But what we've grown to learn is that that additional insight and letting it go. So it might be like a, the next day, <laughs> right? Where I held on to my shit so strong that I'm like, okay, you know what? She was right. But even intentionally having the conversation like, okay, how can I help what you're doing? Yeah. Right. On purpose. Um, and also respecting her thing and, and her respecting my thing respectfully. Right. Like, yeah. hey, if it, I don't know shit about women's clothing, but I, can, I know marketing a little bit. Right. I know people a little bit. So how can I land in that space? And so turn it into departments as opposed to yeah. just like the, that piece, because it can get it can get real. Like, because <laughs> I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit, right? When it comes to two beats, wifey is like, that's her baby. That's her third baby. Oh, for you know sure. what I'm saying? So it's definitely effective communication. For sure. And, and being humble <laughs> to receive. So, man, you're the first person that flipped the question on me. This is the podcast. See, man, that's why I'm glad you're here, man. Nobody else, nobody's ever asked me a question on my show. <laughs> that's why. Um, we talk power couples, power families, man. So, like, my kids get busy. Like, Will Sam hooping. He getting his thing off. Sonia do lip gloss. She got an event. Uh, this fight episode going to air after that. But she got an event coming up where she's teaching young ladies how to make lip gloss. It's really dope. Um, y'all get busy. I pull up to create campaign, and it's a family affair. Oh, for sure. How, how do you instill that type of work ethic in your young lives? Man, and I'm sure your kids probably see this too, right? And you see it. Yeah. Like, it's like, you know, you grew up a certain way, right? Yes. And I believe that, you know, your hope, you know, as we talk about black wealth and, you know, mm -hmm. you want your kids to have a different lifestyle than what you had. Yeah. And you want to, and I believe personally that the major role of a parent is to prepare your child or children mm -hmm. for whatever it is they want to do. 100%. Not do it for them, but prepare them for the journey of whatever that is, right? Yeah. So, you know, I want them to understand that just because your parents are who they are, mm -hmm. that don't mean you just been a coast in any way, shape, or form, right? Yeah. So, no, nah, you're going to have to put in this work. 100%. And you go struggle, you go fail, you go get up, and then we go move on. We go assess what we did, and then we move on, right? So I think that we talk through the, we talk to them through a lot of different ways that this like this is how you demonstrate these characteristics, mm -hmm. and man we try to do a whole lot of stuff it, specifically me I didn't go blame <laughs> Christina for this that you know that teaches them lessons along the lines for instance before either one of our older kids could get social media yeah. they had to do a report they had to do a presentation on mm. personal branding. So you had to tell me how Instagram was going to help you yeah. or how it could hurt you in your personal branding. Because oh, again, yeah. you know, anybody, yeah, you could just sign up and get an account, but I yeah. need you to understand how important it is. Good and bad. Because you belong to us. So you go out there and do something stupid, you belong to us. Yeah. But I want you to understand that it's also a tool for your success. And if, wow. if once you demonstrate that to me, then I'm good. Oh, we made Sanaya do a presentation before she got her phone. Like you got to make it make sense to me. Yeah, it's that's dope, man. Like teaching the kids with Sam, with Sam, with Sam Hoop, and if he fall on the court, if he gets hurt on the court, and I'm because I I help coach, and so I'm able to observe and see how it happens. I don't jump up right away. Oh yeah, because I want I want to see like what what you about to do with this? Because if I jump up, then there's that safety net. Nah, bump that. You got to get up yourself. And it was dope. This past this, this last tournament he was in, he they took a nasty spiel. They was playing bigger kids. I ain't even gonna get into all that right now. Cause <laughs> I would go. Crazy. We, we fourth and fifth in the summertime. The kids we was playing was coming out of fourth and fifth. We going into fourth and fifth. So we playing up essentially, they playing down. Big ass kids. It is what it is. We still got lessons to learn. Um, but he fell, banged himself up, and he was crying on the court, trying to get up. And I, yo, you, you staying in the game or you coming out? And I'm staying in. When it knocked down two free throws. There we go. And in that moment, life lesson, right? So. No, I get it, man. We, we used to have one of those policies. If I come on the court, you done for the day. Like you done for the game. If I come, like if I if I have to come out there, you're done for the game. Yeah. Because it's that serious. That part. So I hey listen, we gonna fight through. Cause that's how life is, man. We you know we and and you, you talked about like business ownership and black women, mm -hmm. and I think and I say this not to be judgmental of anyone, but I think women are nurturers, 
And they Absolutely. mothers are nurturers, right? Mm -hmm. And they definitely nurture their sons. Oh, I call it FJ two chains, short for titty boy. And and they they <laughs> nurture their sons, yeah. but they raise their daughters. Mm. They nurture That's their right. sons, but they raise their daughters. Yeah. And I think it's important that you know that as fathers and male role models, mm -hmm. we make sure that our that our sons and our nephews and whoever that they're getting that same raising and also getting that same nurturing. But it looks different a lot of times. 100%. So I think kind of going back to where we were before with that, that has played a part. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of times, a lot of, you know, a lot of our sons have been over-nurtured and under-raised. Mm -hmm. So they don't know how to handle those predicaments where it's like, hey, it's now or never what we finna do. Yeah. You know, so I think that, yeah. you can't let your emotions take control. Yeah, you gotta be yeah. let's roll through it. So Man, that's, listen, listen, I love it. I love it. We we you mentioned uh your love of sports. <laughs> now I know you you were a sports journalist, How Yeah, mm -hmm. I was well both. Like I both. like yeah, that's what that's what brought me to Wichita originally. Yeah. Okay. And you covered at all sports? So man, I've covered man, I've done it all. So I came here and did high schools. But man, I I I when I was in Nashville, I covered uh, the Titans a little bit. Mm. Uh, so man, I, I mean, I watched it all, man, everything. Yeah. So do you do you watch sports? I'm I'm not like a super sports guy. Okay. I watch NBA, of course. That's mm -hmm. my joint. I watch college basketball, NFL highlights. I watch, but NFL it like moves too slow for me. Okay. Ironically, because things be out there getting knocked over. <laughs> all the time. But um, but I love good plays, yeah. and I love athletic mindsets because there's a certain level of discipline and execution that comes with that. Um, Hall of Fame Yadid is my, my barber, and I just love listening to him talk because it's like such a love. Jamil Levine, my little, my little younger cousin, Hall of Fame, right? Like, she gets busy in us mindsets. Did you come up playing sports, or were you just a lover of No, bro, I played, man. I, I mean, I, ironically enough, man, baseball was my thing. Like, I, I, played, right. I played baseball from, like, 3 to 18. Like, that was, that was my thing. I played a lot of other stuff, too, but baseball was my main thing. Yeah. Uh, man, and I'm going to tell you, Ironically enough, I think baseball really was my first introduction to diversity, equity, and inclusion work mm. in a different way. Okay. Because, so I grew up, well, when I really got into it, I had, man, I played for a coach, man, one of my biggest mentors ever, Glenn Swafford, Coach mm. G. And Coach G, man, we played with all black kids. Okay. All black kids. So... Coach G was black? Yeah, Coach G's black. Okay. We play all black kids. So we would be named like Negro League names. Like we are the stars, we are the clowns. And like yeah. you would think, man, we, you know, 13, 14 years old, you going out there, y'all playing the clowns, man. Them little white kids would be laughing at us, we're like, oh, the clowns, huh? Come on, man. Man, we out there killing them. We be out there, yeah, man, we go out there and kill them. I mean, we, man, listen, we was good. But where I learned it was, so I grew up at, from a, I grew up with from a working class family that accumulated middle class means. Okay. So, man, my father was uh, blessed enough to be able to uh, get a job where he had pretty much unlimited overtime. And I mean, right now, if I call my pops right now, he'd be at work. Like that's all he know. That's all he do. Right. You you didn't call him at the house. You called him at work. Right. Like yeah. So you know. So so we accumulated middle class means, and you know I played with a lot of kids who were in a different situation than me. Yeah. And early higher, on, higher income or lower income? Uh, lower income. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, different socioeconomic status for sure oh, okay, than where okay. we were, right? That's a big diversity thing. That don't yeah, that people, yeah, that people don't talk about, right? Yeah. So I found myself trying to be like them in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And I remember one time we were going on a trip. And I was riding with Coach G. And he was like, hey. He was like, I see that you're doing this. Like, you're acting like. He was like, I didn't want. He's like, I, don't, I didn't ask you to be on this team to try to be. And he named some of the other players. He's like, yeah. we want John. We I wanted Jonathan, so okay. I need Jonathan to be to show up this weekend. Yeah. And it changed my mindset. But it also, as I look back, mm -hmm. talked about the value of authenticity and wow. being able to be you, regardless of what's happening around you. Being able to be you. That's, that's powerful. Damn, man, you just, you're full of life lessons. Hey, man, situations that really show. How you became who you are, and I'm not like psychoanalyzing. No, no, like, for sure. Things like you can see it, things that are planted early. You can talk about pops working hard like that. Like that's dope. That's fire. Um, man, hold on. Jeez, you. I don't think y'all understand how excited I am to have Jay Long up here, man. I, you, you really like. You're a you're a mentor of mine. Like 
quiet yeah. is kept. Like you're somebody that I watch and I gain insights from, gain from, and I'm, I'm blessed to call you one of my good friends in real life. So mm-hmm. I appreciate you sitting down and just sharing your, your stuff. Um, jumping back to, to sports real quick. Okay. With your understanding of sports, which you covering as many sports. I know you're a sports lover. I, I, I do my research a little bit, even when you my man. And I seen you excitement at Roy Williams, not Roy Williams, uh, uh, North Carolina Duke. Oh, no, listen, I, man. I, I seen you excitement around there, right? <laughs> so, but the question I want to lead to is um, if you were the commissioner okay. of any league, any league, which would it be? That's a hard question. I would have the most fun of NBA. Okay. But man, that football money, that man, that football bag is big. Okay. Man, that football bag is different, bro. Okay. That football so, bag is different. So if you're the NFL commissioner, okay. Jay Long is the commissioner of the NFL. Okay. What is the the one major change you would make? The one major change. Now see all these other questions I was prepared for. <laughs> <laughs> he done hit me. He done hit me, and and so y'all y'all don't know this, but man, he would not give me the questions no, beforehand. He would questions he would not give me the questions beforehand, and I was asking. <laughs> so what is the man? Um, I would bring back the celebrations, man. Like I like listen, man. I'm all about personality and fun, mm-hmm. and you know I get it. You there's some taunting that can't be done, right? Yeah. But man, when when what was it, my man, man Joe when T O We'll pull out the marker and sign the football. Yeah. I think, uh, I think the wide Joe Horn for the Saints pulled the cell phone out of the thing. Like I, like man, I love the celebration of mm-hmm. victory, I and I that. and I think that sometimes we we worry about people's feelings too much. Now again, you can't go and throw the football in somebody's face, and like it's not like I'm not about showing other people up, but I'm about you. I'm about celebrating like what it took for me to be able to do this right. Mm-hmm. So man, I I would I would get away from all the hey we we bringing this, the fun celebrations back. I like that. I like that. That's dope. The celebrations that you know, I was watching the pivot. That's one of my favorite podcasts. Oh yeah, man, Ryan Clark, man, good dude. Ryan Clark's great guy, man. Chan is crazy, and I I, I, <laughs> I love listening to um is it Frank? You know, Fred. Fred. I love listening to Fred Taylor talk. Yeah. Like it's just so like calm. But To was on there and he was talking about the celebrations. Yeah. And so that's funny you mentioned that. That's dope. Listen, we're gonna take. One more commercial break, and we're going to get into these last few questions because I still got a couple more for you. Facts. We're going to highlight our sponsors, BRB. JR Mortgage Group is a proud sponsor of Thinking Out Loud with Samuel David. JR Mortgage Group is founded and based in Wichita, Kansas, and its sole focus is to offer its clients and referral partners the best mortgage experiences. Buy, build, and invest with JR Mortgage Group. With JR Mortgage Group, anything is positively possible. Give them a call at 316-247-9639 or visit the website at jrmortgagegroup.com. JR Mortgage Group Incorporated, offering personalized mortgage solutions, fast customized quotes, great rates, and service with integrity. (laughs) Not all borrowers will qualify. This is not a commitment to lend. JR Mortgage Group is an equal housing lender. Again, JR Mortgage Group, jrmortgagegroup.com. Peace and big love. We're back in the building, and I got my special guest, Mr. Jonathan Long, Jay Long, Mr. Long, um, the, the, the guy. He's the guy. Listen, um, you know, it's funny because I, I definitely hit most of my questions, but I got a couple of questions I've added to the Thinking Out Loud podcast that I want to really, like, just to, to in, enhance and elevate conversations, mm-hmm. right? And I think you would be able to provide some great insight into these things. So I just got about, what, three of them, four of them, I'm going to ask you. Okay. Um, and if you would, it just, you know, give Let, me your insight. Okay, so, bet. The first one, as a black man, and you definitely, you in the DEI space even, right? And you navigate diversity, not just, you know, um, multicultural, multi-generational. We talk socioeconomics, not just, um, you know, disabilities, things like that, making sure everybody has access and a seat at the table. Um, so you, you've got a wide lens to everybody's challenges they face, right? What has been in your, not just career, in your elevation in life, what has been some of your biggest challenges as a black man? Man, uh, some of my biggest challenges. Huh. I will say that I think early on, it was understanding that I could be authentic. Mm-hmm. It was understanding that I could be authentic because it's easy for people 
to say, oh yeah, authenticity, be your true self. You know, yeah. it's another thing to actually execute that authenticity wow. in a way that makes it make sense for whatever it is you're doing. Like I said before, I'm big on alignment. Yeah. So how do I make sure that what I'm trying to do aligns with not just what I'm trying to do, but who I am mm -hmm. and really finding that special mix of here's how I go about and execute that and do that. Yeah. That's probably been at least, especially early on, mm -hmm. like one of the most difficult parts. And then you know, managing that, just managing that yeah. as you move throughout your career, finding like-minded individuals 100%. that, you know, that understand that and, you know, not, not trying to dim down your light because nobody else, you know, nobody <laughs> else's light gets brighter because you dimmed yours. Right. right. So understanding that and being able to balance that. Man, that's fire. I, I say a candle is nothing that lights a candle. Nobody's light gets brighter because you dim yours. Man, listen. But that, that's a real thing, something I often talk about with folks is like, yo, bringing your authentic self, but also navigating what comes with bringing your authentic self. Because everybody won't be, like, you don't be ready for like, oh, they hate on me, they too. Like, they just don't know how to deal with that. So how do you navigate that? To, like, that's a real thing. So well, I'm not just that. that. And we'll stay here for just a yeah, second. Not even, not, not just that, but also understanding, hey, just because your authentic self might say cuss everybody out. Mm. That don't mean that that's what you should do, right? Yeah. Like that's that don't. Yeah. Well, they wouldn't let me be authentic. Well, did you ever think that what you were trying to do in that moment might not be the way that the culture of the organization exists, 100. right? 100. Like so, understanding again that balance and that is like you not doing the first and main thing that you would do is not you not being authentic, right? Yeah, is necessarily hey. I need to get this done, so we gonna move this effectively. Oh, so it's understanding all of those nuances yeah. and not just going straight to, oh man, they they don't they don't value me authentically. Yeah, I showed them who I was. <laughs> this month. Yeah, now bring your authentic, productive, professional self. That's that's a big one. That's a big one. Okay, okay, I like that, man. My my next one. What what was your aha moment? that helped affirm that you was on the right track? All right, I got two. And I'm going to do one professionally and then one, like, community. Definitely. So, man, um, so Urban Professionals was big. Like, that was big for me. Yeah. Uh, jumping out. And really, that started because I was talking. I can't remember who I was talking to, but it, there was an issue. And I said, well, hey, we're we're... How do you get, like, how do you hear about these things? Yeah. And they were like, oh, you go to these meetings. And then I would go to the meetings, and I would be the only person that looked like me in that age group and, you know, and other things. And I'd be like, well, hey, why aren't there more people who look like me here? Because this is an important thing. And I know I hear people talking about it, but yeah. this is where the decisions are being made. Mm. And they were oh, well... You know, we don't know who where the people are who look like you. We don't know that. So I was like, all right, well, I'll bring them together and do that. Yeah. And I think being able to do that really helped, you know, me find my place in the community. Mm -hmm. Not being from here, not, yeah. you know, not really have any foundation in that. That really helped me, you know, mobilize that. Yeah. So that helped out a lot. And, and it really gave me the confidence. Mm-hmm. To try to like to really go out and do some stuff, like man, I feel like I felt like we did some really dope stuff. Like, 100%. I mean, you mentioned obviously the birthday party in Trust Bank Arena was mm -hmm. was cool, but you know we did uh, after we did Dream Chasers, we did another event over there yeah. where we had you know we had uh, live music on the third floor. We had DJ Detroit DJing in on the second floor, right? Yeah. Uh, we had Black Panther Watch Party. We rented out a theater and did. Yes, indeed. Again, one of those things where people were like, "Hey, this would be dope." Somebody mm -hmm. like, and it was like, "Well, let's go do it." Like, Word. let's go, like, let's go Word. do it. And I think that kind of helped give me the ability to. I don't want to necessarily say fear to be fearless, mm -hmm. but to say, "All right, let's go do it." Right. Do it. And then professionally, I think, uh, honestly, I think just being, just being at the chamber. Really helped change my perspective on how these things work. 
Because you always have a perception of what's happening. And, yeah. oh, this happened like this. This happened like that. Yeah. And then I got a chance to see, oh, okay. Well, now it makes sense how that got like that. Yeah. So now it's like, all right, well, how do I, in, like, now how do I impede that mm-hmm. to kind of shift it to where it, it makes sense in some other ways? And so I think that, you know, really working with the chamber helped me professionally to understand that and to learn how to be frustrated, mm. to learn how to be productive throughout my frustration. Because I can imagine in your, in your workspace, in the rooms you in, in the work you do, like frustrations are, frustrations are damn near natural. Uh, listen, I tell people all the time, diversity, equity, and inclusion work is the most uplifting work I'll do, but it is also easily the most frustrating work that I'll do, 100%. Yeah. You, well, and you don't got to say nothing on this part, but if you do have insight, I know when I was doing the work, like you don't, Kendrick Lamar has a line on his new album where he say, where the hypocrites at? What community feel they the only ones relevant? And when I was doing diversity work, I, was, I, I realized like everybody has some type of challenge that their community faces. And respectfully though, every challenge isn't as urgent Right, as the next community's challenge may mm-hmm. be. It may be in perspective, but it ain't the same like sense of like, let's get this resolved. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you got any insight on that? Or you don't, you don't... Oh, easily. I touch on it, man. Okay. No, because it happens all the time. Like, we'll talk about it. I'm a data person. Mm, numbers don't lie. Unless you skew them. But numbers, yeah, don't, yeah. numbers are naturally like they normally So, don't. what I've learned is that I use the data that supports mm-hmm. what I want to do. So... You know, that I learned in college that there is data out there for everything. Yes. So I use the data that works for what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of times we stay, we'll stay, let's stay with the community. When people look like us, yeah. I go out and I find the data. So somebody will say, well, hey, you're black. So you, all you do is focus on the black stuff. Mm-hmm. What I will say is that's very, that's very observant of you to notice I'm black. <laughs> but... I will I will say well hey do you recognize that you know one percent or less than one percent of venture capitalist funding goes to black entrepreneurs Mm. so therefore we have to be intentional Mm. in getting more connections to that capital if we want to be what we say we want to be now if we don't want to be what we say we want to be then cool then let's stop saying that Mm. but if we want to be everything that we say we want to be here are the things that are stopping that at this point. And use the data to support your causes. 100%. Come on, man. The numbers do not lie. I love analyzing data. It's like, it's like, it's exhilarating. Yeah. Because then you get down wor- wormholes and you're like, oh, shit. You get to peel back more and peel back more and peel back more and well, see. Everybody has feelings. So yeah. we got to take it out of that. Because if, like, if everything you want to do, I, I'll say a lot of times we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion work. It's not my job to change your heart and mind. It's not my right. job. It's my job to show how these things are important to profit. Mm. And, yeah. and if I can do that, <laughs> yeah. then I typically, you know, while it might not be as immediate as I would like, mm-hmm. we typically can make progress. I mean, Big Warren said it best. Playing with my money is like playing with my emotions. All the way, 100%. Come on, man. Um, okay, two more questions I got. And there we go. What keeps you up at night? Like, after... after have an impact after your winnings. What keeps you up at night? What what keeps you thinking? One is legacy. Like I'm a big legacy person. Right. Um, from both my family perspective, but then also like my community and business impact. Like, okay. you know, I I want to make sure that what I'm doing is sustainable and lasts the test of time. And then also, going back to what I said again for the fourth time, I'm competitive. Yeah. So, like, hey, even with myself, like, being, you know, I'm looking in the mirror, like, hey, how we going to be better? Like, you know, so really looking at, hey, are you pushing this? Are you, you know, are you taking the time for this? Are you doing that? Really trying to make sure that, you know, we're doing the best that we can do. Yeah. And, and you know, making those deposits into life that are sustainable from a legacy perspective. I like that. Legacy, legacy, legacy. It's dope you talk about being competitive because I'm like competitive and petty. Like, it's in almost everything. 
and it's like from the most humble space. Mm -hmm. But I'll find like a target. Like J like MJ said, I took it personal. I'll find some type of like target, and I'm like, I'm about to smash that, right? And the person don't even know that I'm looking at them, and it's not even about them. But it's like, yo, that's a it's a tangible thing I want to reach. But I shifted that to straight marriage stuff. Like, yo, when I'm looking at myself, like, bro, you really that was whack, right? You, that was a whack move you just pulled, or hey, that was fire as fuck. How can you? How can you duplicate that and sustain that type of energy? So competitiveness is important. And I think even as I was talking about the women in, in the community, I don't see them competing. And I think that's one thing no. that definitely sees them elevating the culture because it's not a level of competition. It's like strictly community. So, I mean, the, the Craig campaign was, um, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get it wrong. Collaboration over competition. Collaboration over competition. That's it, man. Yeah. We can all win together as we push this Wichita Renaissance thing forward. I feel like I ain't said that enough on this episode. Wichita Renaissance, Wichita Renaissance, Wichita Renaissance. Um, all right. You got kids. But 10 years ago, what what would you have told a younger Jay Long? I got nope. No, I was just, I was just, I was just. I got, I got. Man, be you. They'll adjust. Like I think, you know, I think that, that you know, was hard. you you <laughs> mentioned, you know, that like, because again, I don't want to be, like I am competitive, but I believe ultimately in collaboration. Like working yeah. with people. When I say being competitive, like push yourself to yeah. try to do the best that you can, right? Yeah. And I think that early. You know, especially like 10 years ago, it was, there was like, okay, well, how do you make this happen by still playing and be like being in these lanes and being that? Yeah. So I, what I've learned and what I've taught myself over those years is don't worry as much about the lanes, worry about the guardrails. Mm. Cause the lanes mm. all going the same way, right? The lane, these one way streets, lanes going the same way, right? 100. So the guardrails, are the thing is like the one thing that you're pushing towards. So maybe you in the center lane, but maybe you okay. Now we need to accelerate this. So let's get in the left and let's push. Mm -hmm. All right. There's another thing that now we need to go all the way to the right and slow it down a little bit. Uh, I think I think it was Ross that says, "I just don't want to waste time. I don't have a problem taking time, but I don't want to waste no time." And I think that when you look at it. Sometimes you got to shift into the different lanes to be able to make progress to where you're going. So I think for me is don't worry so much about the about the lanes as you do the guardrails. Because once I get off the guardrails, I'm, I'm, I'm off the road, right? But if I can stay within the guardrails, I'm going to have to switch lanes a little bit. But, I can but I'm still moving in that same direction. Bars all day. Man, you should write raps, bro. Nah, bro. I, I, I think when you talk lanes, like... Uh, I heard a dope quote at the Great Campaign, actually, and the quote was not, they, they mentioned, I never get mad at um, somebody being in the same lane as me. My job is to then figure out how I can help them if they got a flat tire. Like, that's fire. And then even as you was talking about lanes, I'm like, yo, it is important to be able to switch lanes because you got your, your fast lane. Yeah. You got your slow pace lane. And you got the HOV lane where we all together driving together. Hey, we all, hey, hop on and be like, let's go. Let's go get it. So many isms, man. All right. Um, 10 years from now, where do you see your legacy? Man, um, 10 years from now. I just want to be able to celebrate everybody who, you know, who's been with me and who's rocked with me. You know, I want to see them win. Like, I want to be in a place where we can, where we all celebrate, where we all kicking it. Yeah. Where we, you know, where we were, we talked about generational wealth and we just didn't talk about it. We, we, we started those steps. 100. So now we're moving towards that. Like, I honestly, I want to see the lane of black progress. I want to see us in that thing moving how traffic should move. But I want to see more cars in there yeah. with me. Like, you know, you, you talked about the interest bank arena thing. You know, I mentioned the Black Panther Party thing. Uh, the Black Panther Party. I mentioned the Black Panther Watch Party <laughs> thing. Man, I think it's so dope that, again, man, you got so much activity in the Wichita Renaissance. Mm -hmm. And I just hope that, you know, when I look back, 
that we'll see double and triple that same energy. Yeah. That same energy here. And I will tell you, like, that's what I'm seeing in Tulsa now. 100%. That's what I'm seeing in Tulsa now. Like, it, like it's... Like it is really a lot of really dope energy yeah. that is happening across all different activities, industries, music, tech, business, like everything. Like the energy is just crazy. And so I'm hoping to see, you know, that even more so in Wichita kind of move in that direction, man. Cause you can do it here, man. You can do it here in Wichita. It's just yeah. it. You know, it takes you to not be looking for somebody else to go do it. Yeah. You just got to do it. And you, and you just got to be able to move forward in that. The beautiful thing about this, I remember a DJ told me this like 10 plus years ago. He was like, artists, this, he's like, it's a test market, right? Artists come here to see how it's going to work. And something I've seen in hindsight in business spaces and in, in all levels of, of leveling up, like if you can do it here, you can do it anywhere. But we also have this gift and curse of proximity, right? Where you, if you can pull off something crazy dope, a lot of things haven't been seen here, right? So you might have like a little, you, you may have some lag time before people catch on, but the, it's got a high sustain rate. And I think that's really dope about this special town of ours. And as we look at this Wichita Renaissance, and you are a big champion, you are a big pusher of it, you are a big mover of it, you are a big starter of it, right? Um, I'm just excited to see how it continues to grow. I might end up changing the name of the show to Wichita Renaissance because I'm going to talk about it every single time. Um, I'm watching my camera because it looks like it's trying to time me out, but I don't think it is. We're about to see. Um, but as we part, you got any, 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 I don't want to say final words. That sounds fucked up because I'll say it in my head. <laughs> <laughs> you got any words you want to part with? Oh, uh, man. Thank you for letting me be on your platform. 100%. Man, shout out to you. Man, you've been, you've been very interesting integral in what I've been able to do right. and you know just as much as you say you look up to me about doing stuff man I love like the freedom and creativity that you bring and Wichita needs that space right. so I, I appreciate you for bringing that to the town like and, and, and always being you within that and you know again for everybody that's watching listening just go do it be you they'll adjust go do what you want to do and don't worry about if you get a whole bunch of buy-in or if you don't like go out and make it happen and make it yours and partner with those who are successful in in how you view success and don't let somebody else try to tell you what success is you gauge your own success and go out and go let's go get it let's go get it listen jay long it's been a pleasure and honor i appreciate and respect everything you do from the family to the community to your works across the states you really are a champion of this thing man jay long really achieved I appreciate you joining me today, bro. Thank you, sir. 100%. You came with me hanging. Yeah. Oh, we ain't even talk noobs. Oh, we out of here. Q Critics. Yo, yo. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Who that boy a critic? He just talk about it. Who that boy a critic? He ain't talk too much. Who that boy a critic? He just talk about it. Who that boy a critic? He just talk too much. Who that boy a critic? He just talking, he don't live it. Who that boy a critic? Who that boy a critic? Who that boy a critic? He just talking, he don't live it. Who that boy a critic? Yeah, I know, yeah, I know. How you never there, but be the first to offer commentary. I mean, nobody asks you. All your conversation is voluntary. And you talking to yourself, playing with yourself, solitary. I mean, it kind of makes sense if this talk increased your monetary. But you out hating for free, you do that shit so well. Next time you speak on me, say my name. It ring bells, you know me. I don't need no introduction in this bitch. You know me, I'm the one that keeps. Keep it jumping in this bitch, young OG. Streets gave me that name. I was honored. I be walking how I talk it. When I walk, it got them bothered. I don't understand, dog. I really took it farther. I gave niggas the game. Plus, I'm a really great father. Oh, he think he Cisco. Oh, he think he Ebert. First it was all love. Now he Brutus to my Caesar. First it was all love. Now he Judas to my Jesus. Praying on my downfall. Who that boy a critic? He just talk about it. Who that 
boy a critic, yeah, he talk too much. Who that boy a critic, he just talk about it. Who that boy a critic, he just talk too much. Who that boy a critic, he just talking, he don't live it. Who that boy a critic, who that boy a critic. Who that boy a critic, he just talking, he don't live it. Who that boy a critic.